Hey friends, let's get moving. Today you will need two blocks and one bolster. So some alternatives, if you don't have a bolster, you can stack up some folded blankets, snag a cushion from your couch or even a pillow or two from your bed. And then for the blocks, maybe you just have one block. Um, for the second block, you can always use like a thick hardback book or, um, you know, something of a similar height that's, uh, that's kind of sturdy. Um, so let's get started. We're gonna start standing up. Take your arms out by your sides. And um, as the arms come up to wrist at shoulder height, make sure that your rib cage didn't lift with your arms, okay? So nestle um, your rib cage down with relaxed abs and just take your arms up. And so here we're gonna have the right palm facing the ceiling and you're gonna turn to look at the right palm, but then the left palm is gonna rotate back and up. Okay, so right shoulder is kind of pointing back, left shoulder joint is kind of pointing forward. So then we're gonna switch. The right shoulder points forward, the left shoulder points back as we look to the left. And we're just gonna go back and forth. So we're internally rotating one arm while we externally rotate the other arm. And you're always looking at the palm that is flipped more up towards the ceiling. So hopefully feeling some warmth coming into the shoulder joints. Noticing how your neck feels with this turning. And as you're turning your head, can you keep your chin level with the ground? So it's not up here I lost my rhythm when I did that. Uh, so it's not like up here, you're not like angling up or down. Really your chin is just pretty level with the ground. So we're getting a pure rotation in the neck. And just a few more here, making sure those shoulders are nice and warm. And then go ahead and stop. Drop your arms, shake it out, shake, shake, shake. Shake your hands. Shake your legs, <laughs> shake, shake, shake. <sighs> okay, now let's bring it down to the ground. You're gonna need your bolster for this. So I'm gonna spread my bolster um, wide across my mat and I'm gonna put my knees onto my bolster and I'm gonna find a neutral pelvis to start. So neutral pelvis is when your bony hip point, your ASIS, is in a line with your pubic bone, okay? And so um, you, you might have to sense deeper than any lovable soft tissue here and go deep to your bone structure to see if those two points are kind of vertical in this position, okay? So I feel in my body that I need to kind of tuck a little bit to get to that vertical position. I'm gonna keep my left leg where it is, try to keep my pelvis locked in in that neutral and step my right foot forward. Notice that my, my right knee isn't all the way bent yet, okay? Bring your hands to your hips because that can give you some information about what's going on with your pelvis. And then we're gonna lunge forward any amount. So shifting the pelvis forward any amount, deepening the bend in the front knee. And then we're gonna shift our weight back towards the back leg. Now, this right foot is pointing straight ahead. We're gonna kinda take it out to 45 degrees, okay? And same thing here. Now, this time as we lunge, we're tracking this knee here, okay? So your lunge is kind of at a 45 diagonal. And again, come back to center. And now we're gonna go straight out to the side. So the right foot's gonna move straight out to the side. The knee is pointing straight out to the right, but my hips are still facing forward. My pelvis is still facing forward. And so the lunge here is gonna go side to side. And then you're gonna come back to center. We're gonna come back to 45, retracing our steps. And then back to starting. And we're gonna go one more time through that all through all of that. <laughs> so taking the right leg out to 45, lunging towards 45, and then straight out to the side, 
lunging to the side, and it's okay if your knee comes over your ankle as long as it feels good for your knee joint. Back to 45, and then back to straight ahead. Okay, and now we're gonna come back to that 45 position. I need to readjust my kneecap there in the back. Okay, so back in this 45 position. Now, um, let's go ahead and lunge into that 45 position. Take your right hand and you're gonna slide the back of your hand and the outside of your arm down across your inner knee, any amount. And so you can do this with your um, chest kind of squared towards the ground. Um, you can kind of open your chest a little bit away from the ground. It's your choice, whatever feels, feels good and kind and well in your body today. Take one more breath here and then exhale and we're gonna bring it all back to center. <sighs> okay, put your right knee down, kneeling here. Take a full breath in and out and notice if there's any difference from left to right. Okay, so find that neutral pelvis again, ASIS stacked over top of the pubic bone. Right leg is gonna stay put this time and we're gonna step the left foot forward. Okay, so getting ready to lunge forward. We, we've got our hands on our hips to make sure that our pelvis doesn't um, tuck or untuck too much. Um, as you start to lunge forward, if you notice that, oh, your pelvis is like, um, tilting forward here, you're sticking your tail out, then um, go ahead and regroup, come back to neutral pelvis, and maybe you don't lunge forward quite as far the next time. Because we're really, this way, when we are prioritizing the, um, the tilt of the pelvis and keeping it in that neutral position, we really are um, loading more of this front hip on the back leg and that's the goal here. If we let the pelvis come untucked, then something else is gonna get the movement. But really we want this front, um, the front of this hip and the back leg to get the movement of this pose, of this exercise. So you're gonna lunge forward and rock back. And then the left leg's gonna come out to 45 and we're gonna lunge in that direction. We're gonna come back to center and then out to the side. So we're kind of lunging straight out to the side and then back to 45, keeping a neutral pelvis throughout and straight ahead again and back to 45 and then back to the straight out to the side as we go straight out to the side, remember the hip points stay facing forward. Back to 45. Finishing up with the leg straight out in front. And then sneaking back over to 45 so that we can get a little bit of that nice side stretch. So lunge over and then your left arm is gonna slide along the inside of your left leg any amount, you can reach for the ground, any amount, until you feel that nice stretch. This side's definitely different for me. I'm all the way down here at the ground with this left hand, saying hello to my, to my plant. <laughs> Take a nice deep breath in. And then as you exhale, coming back up to center and the left knee steps back to meet the right. And again, just take a full breath in and out here. <sighs> okay, so come off of your bolster, and if you can, you can come into a kneeling position with your bolster snuggled right up at your tummy. If kneeling doesn't feel well for you or it's not accessible for your knee joints, sit in a chair for this part. And so you're really gonna snuggle the bolster into your belly as you lean forward and drape your torso over the bolster. And then you can just rest your arms wherever feels nice and let your chin drop and your head relax. 
So the bolster is kind of blocking the movement of our chest and belly on the front of the body. And that way that's gonna, that's gonna end up transferring a little bit more breath movement or breath awareness even into the back of the torso. So watch for that, watch for these actions that occur as you breathe. As you inhale, you maybe feel your spine move up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, you maybe feel your spine settling down towards the bolster. As you're inhaling, you might also feel your rib cage fan wider on all sides. And then as you exhale, you might notice your rib cage narrowing in. Take one more breath here, allowing the back to expand. And then we're gonna roll up right. And let's get the bolster out of the way for a moment and grab you two blocks. So this is a very sophisticated piece of technology with three settings already built in, low, medium, and high. We're gonna use the high setting. So put your blocks on high setting and come onto your knees and hands. So you want the blocks um, a, at least shoulder width apart, maybe a scotch wider than your shoulders. And I'm gonna place my palms um, on the block so that my thumb and pinky kind of curl around and then my other three fingers curl around the, the front of the block. Now take a look at your forearms and see if you can swivel your elbow creases to point in the same direction as your fingers. Making sure that our upper arms are in external rotation. And then you can kind of take your knees back just a little bit to give yourself some more room. And then from here, hinge your hips back any amount. Now, if that starts to be too much of a bend in your knees, you know what you can do? Just scoot your knees back a little bit further. Okay, elbow creases. As we start to hinge back, the elbow creases are gonna be pointing towards the ceiling because we're changing our, our shape here. Try to keep your elbow creases pointing towards the ceiling as you reach your pelvis back. And then from here, let's just make sure that we're not, we're not doing this. We're not hammocking through the spine and, and, and um, letting the belly and rib cage sag towards the ground. Keep your spine in that neutral position um, and your, your low ribs kind of gently hugging up towards the spine. And then from here, shrug your shoulders up, to, uh, up towards your ears. And then by kind of pulling almost on the blocks, you're gonna tuck your shoulder blades in towards your back pockets. And again, reaching the shoulder blades towards the ears, you can kind of push your blocks forward away from you a little bit and then pull with the hands ever so slightly to get the shoulder blades down the back, keeping the rib cage nice and, and um, lifted away from the ground. Let's do a few more of those. And notice as you're going, as the shoulder blades are gliding and sliding up and down the back, notice if one of them feels like more free than the other. Um, and how smooth is that motion of your shoulder blades? Are there any speed bumps that your shoulder blades have to go over? Do your speed bumps or do your shoulder blades kind of stall out at any point? Just notice. One more. Okay, great job. Now, go ahead and walk your knees back up towards your blocks. And now we're gonna sit down for just a moment here. Put your blocks kind of behind you on the low setting. Extend your legs out and you're gonna put your hands back behind you on the blocks. So you have some options with your hands. You can do your fingertips pointing in the same direction as your legs, as your feet, 
or you can turn your hands out to the side. You can even be on fists if that's what feels better for your wrists. Your choice. Okay, so put your hands back behind you and let's take the shoulder blades up towards the ears, any amount, squeeze them in towards the spine. And now as we push down through the hands, the shoulder blades are gonna go down the back and the pelvis is gonna lift up away from the ground. And as we do that, let's squeeze the tush to help lift the hips the rest of the way from the ground. So if this feels too challenging, another option that you have is to try this position with your knees bent, okay? So you can be here if that feels easier for your legs and your, your back to manage. Go ahead and set your hips down and let's do that again. So let your shoulder blades come apart. So here as the shoulder blades come apart, my shoulder joints are facing or pointing forward pretty strongly. And then shrug your shoulders up towards your ears any amount. Squeeze your shoulders, your shoulder blades towards your spine and then push down through your hands and let your shoulder blades move down the back. Squeeze the glutes to let the hips lift any amount more. And while you're here, just go ahead and try softening the front of the neck. Feel your rib cage expand as you breathe. Great job. Set your hips back down and let's lose the blocks for just a moment. Put those off to the side. And now we're gonna transfer around to come down onto the belly. So slither yourself out onto your tummy. Point your toes so the tops of your feet are on the ground. And then let's take the arms kind of out at like a field goal position here. So there's elbow in a line with shoulder, wrist in a line with elbow, and there's about a 90 degree bend in the elbows. So here I'm keeping my head up away from the ground because if I put my head on the ground, then the microphone sounds like this. Um, and my sound editor husband gets mad at me, so <laughs> he doesn't really, he's great. Um, so I'm gonna keep my head up and my neck long, but please, I invite you to rest your head on the ground or on a, a rolled blanket, whatever feels most comfortable for you. So here, reach wide through your elbows without really going anywhere. You're just gonna reach your elbows out from side to side and notice that maybe there's a little sensation coming in through the triceps as you do that reach. Okay, keep your elbows reaching wide, but now let's start to squeeze the shoulder blades towards the spine until we've kind of maxed out the movement of the shoulder blades by themselves. And then the forearms are gonna float up away from the mat away from the ground. And then again, release your forearms down. As you're releasing forearms down, reach out wide through the elbows. So that's a really subtle thing. And if that's something that you can't wrap your head around right now, don't worry about it. Just do the shape. Um, just meet me here with the shape. So again, with the elbows and the forearms down on the ground, soft neck, relaxing the head, you're reaching out through the elbows maybe. First, pull the shoulder blades in through the spine and they're still down away from the ears, okay? And then after you've maxed out the movement of the shoulder blades, that's when you're gonna let your forearms float away from the ground. Take a deep breath and then relax your forearms down. Keep reaching through the elbows maybe letting that space in between the shoulder blades relax for a moment. We're gonna do this one more time, reaching through the elbows if you can feel that. Pull the shoulder blades in towards the spine and as they move in towards the spine, they're moving down a bit. So they're moving away from the ears. And once you've maxed out the movement of your shoulder blades, then you can go ahead and lift your forearms away from the ground 
any amount. As you lift the forearms, make sure that the shoulder blades don't creep up towards the ears for three, two, breathing, one. Now slowly lower, reach through the elbows as you lower and relax. Rock your hips a little from side to side. Take a deep breath in and let it out. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and slide the hands under the shoulders. And let's take the hands a little bit wider than the shoulders, actually. Let your elbows point out side to side here. But pull the, the shoulder blades away from the ears. And then take a breath in. Use your knees if you need to. As you exhale, push up to a modified plank, a half plank. <sighs> Great, and then walk your knees forward and take a seat for a moment. Woo, my shoulders are feeling good. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get our two blocks again. So here we're gonna put one block towards the front left of the mat and the other block towards the back right of the mat. And so I'm gonna put my left hand on the front block and my right shin and knee on this back block. And so I'm in this kind of like wonky all fours situation. And I do wanna make sure that even though my hips and my shoulders are no longer level with one another, I do wanna make sure that I've placed my knees under my hips and my wrists under my shoulders. Fingers spread nice and wide, elbow creases pointing forward. Okay, so just take a moment to feel the wonky here. <laughs> You've essentially like manufactured a twist in your body. And now we're gonna try to untwist and um, let the right hand and the, the left knee levitate to meet the level of the, the left hand and the right knee. So we're gonna take a breath in to prepare. And then as you exhale, you're gonna pick up the, um, the right hand and the left knee. And then inhale, let those find the ground again. And exhale. Feel how your core abdominals turn on to help you um, get your hydraulic lift here. Inhale, back down. Exhale. And again, if your front wrist is beginning to get tired, remember you can always be on your fist instead of your wrist. Here we go, inhale to prepare. Exhale, hydraulics, inhale down, exhale, last one, and exhale. Fantastic. Set your knee down, set your hand down, get off your hands, take a break if you need to shake out that left wrist, go for it. You wanna shake anything else? Shake that too. And let's, um, let's switch the configuration of our blocks. So the right block is forward and the left, lo left block is back. That was a lot of hard sounds for my mouth to make that time. Okay, so left knee on the block, right hand on the block. Get situated so that your wrists are under your shoulders and your knees are under your hips. Okay, now just take a few breaths here and feel the, feel the wonky. <sighs> Check in with your elbow creases, make sure those are pointing forward. Okay. Let's get ready to uh, level things out. So take a deep breath in to prepare. And then as you exhale, the right knee and the left hand float back up to level. Inhale to settle down and exhale to lift. This side, let's keep going. This side feels totally different. 
in my body. I almost feel like this side doesn't know what to do. <laughs> um, so pay attention to that in your own body. <sighs> Did one side feel kind of skilled at the movement um, or like it knew what to do, but the other side felt kind of like it was going in blind or almost like it, it almost feels like I'm trying to write with my non-dominant hand here. And if you are noticing that in your body, it's time for self-compassion. <laughs> you can think, wow, my body's been doing something for it for most of its time that, um, you know, doesn't allow it to be used in this way. This is a new movement. It's pretty normal for it to feel weird. <sighs> Let's do one more and settle. Okay, we're gonna go back to the first side after we shake out here. Shake out, shake out, shake out. Remember, if your wrists are bothering you, you can be up on your fists. There's no harm in making that modification. Find what's kind for you. So let's go ahead and switch left block forward, right block back. And I am gonna come onto my um, fists this time because that's gonna feel kind for my body. Okay, so feeling the wonky again, just take a breath. Make sure your elbow creases are forward. And then as you exhale, come back to level. <sighs> okay, and here, see if you can get some movement in your right arm and left leg. Uh, can you let them kind of dangle or sway? See how um, as you move your free leg and arm, watch what happens to your core abdominals. See how they react to that movement. So you can try opening out to the side. You can try kind of lengthening out almost like a bird dog position. Whew, I'm feeling the challenge there. I like that one. Maybe you go out at 45, just feeling around for three, two, and one. Go ahead and set yourself down. Get off your hand for a moment, shake it out. Okay, let's switch over to the other side. So right block forward, left block back. Again, you can be on fists if you want to. Take a moment to feel the wonky. Elbow creases forward. Deep breath in and then exhale. Got your hydraulic lift there. And you can start to kind of dangle here. Explore the movement of your free arm and your free leg. And as you do that, Watch how your very intelligent core abdominal muscles will try to stabilize your body and react. Then again, maybe you'll come into kind of a, a bird dog position with left arm forward, right leg back. Maybe you'll kind of do like a fire hydrant <laughs> and counterbalance. <clears throat> Maybe you'll go out at 45. Lots of options. Just moving around. Examining with curiosity the stability that our bodies can provide. For three, two, and one. Okay, go ahead and settle down. Let's get the blocks out of the way for a moment. We're gonna make our way up to standing. See if you can do so without using your hands, but of course, if you need to, do it. Find what's kind. Adjust your wardrobe as needed now that we're here. Okay, so we're gonna revisit that kind of wonky lunge configuration that we did with the bolster in the beginning. And if you're worried about balance, um, make sure that you're close to a wall or a chair just in case you need to like 
you know, reach out for some support. So start towards the back of your practice space with your feet hip distance apart, hip bone distance apart. And we're gonna start with the right leg forward. Take a step forward with the right foot and you're starting by just, you just trace that right foot forward in a straight line. So your feet are still hip distance apart. Okay, bring your hands to your hips. And we're already in this kind of like lunge position. So we don't really need to go any deeper necessarily, but let's see how it feels when we kind of shift the bend out of the knee and take the right foot, hop it over towards 45. So if the hop it doesn't work for you, instead of doing the hop it, you can kind of heel toe, okay? And feel free to use the wall or a chair for stability during that transition. So even though the, the right toes and the right knee are pointed out at 45, the hips are still facing forward here. We're just seeing how that feels. Woo, I almost lost my balance. Okay, now again, you can hop out to the side or you can heel toe your foot out to the side. And I actually need to scoot this way so that I have enough room. Hop, hop. Okay, so here I have just turned my toes out to the side and my knee out to the side. Kind of feels weird, doesn't it? <laughs> we don't ever really, really do this. Okay, then come back to 45. Okay, and then come back to straight ahead. Okay. And now from here, we're gonna keep the front leg bent, but just drop your back heel, your left heel down towards the ground. And so um, if you are used to yoga, this would be kind of a, a warrior two foot position. Um, so from here, we're gonna take the right arm and we're gonna slide and reach down towards the ground on the inside of the right foot. You might get to the ground, you might not. It's okay. Take some deep breaths here, noticing any side stretching. One more breath. And then as you exhale, Go ahead and come up right. You can straighten that right leg. Hook your thumbs together. Take your arms up towards the ceiling. And then if you're, let's make sure that our torso is, is turned in the correct direction for this. So if your torso is turned towards your front foot, towards your right foot, I want you to turn your torso towards the same direction that your left toes are pointing in, okay? And then from there, you're gonna lean back any amount, or I should say back side. I'm feeling my left side scrunching up a whole lot and I'm trying to rip my thumbs apart here. One breath in and out. And then coming back up, lower your arms. Let's come back to starting standing with the feet hip distance apart at the back end of the practice space. Take a full breath in and out. <sighs> Great. Okay, now let's step the left foot forward. So remembering that we're just gonna trace a straight line forward with the left foot so that the feet are still hip distance apart. And that's really gonna help with our sense of balance and stability as well. Okay, so this is a pretty normal lunge position, right? Now let's just see what happens when we either hop or heel toe the left leg out to about 45 degrees, but the pelvis, the hip points are still pointing forward. Ooh, that balance is a little bit challenging. <laughs> okay, and now hop or heel toe so that you're um, left toes point straight out to the left, but your pelvis is still pointing straight ahead. Okay, and then from here, come back to 45. And then come back to straight ahead. Okay, 
So now from here, this is where we're gonna drop the right heel down to the ground. And as we do that, our orientation kind of changes. The right foot toes uh, point out to the side, okay? So now we're gonna take the left arm and we're gonna slide down the inside of the left leg any amount. <sighs> reaching any amount towards the ground. You might get there, you might not. And just breathe and if you feel a stretch sensation, just enjoy that stretch sensation. Take one more breath here. And on your next exhale, rise up. Straighten that left leg. Now remember, if your torso is pointing in the same direction as your left foot toes right now, let's rotate the torso so that it's pointing in the same direction as the right foot toes. And notice, I didn't turn my pelvis because that would feel funny on this knee here. It was just my torso, my rib cage, and my shoulders and neck and head that rotated um, towards the, the right. So let's go ahead and hook the thumbs again. Create that resistance for yourself, pulling apart, lift your arms up, and then we're gonna reach to the right and back. So the right side's getting a scrunch, the left side's getting lengthened, and we're ripping the thumbs apart here. Notice how your breath feels different. One more breath in and out. And go ahead and come back upright. Lower your arms and step your feet towards one another again. Take a full breath in and out. Whew. That's feeling good. Okay, let's go ahead and make our way down to the ground again. If you can move down through a squat or a lunge or through crisscross legs, do that. Um, try not to use your hands if possible. Okay. So once you've found your way down to the ground, let's go ahead and grab the blocks again. And this time you're gonna put the blocks right next to your sides. Okay. And you're gonna put your palms or your fists on the blocks, whatever is feeling better for your wrists in this moment. Okay. So if you put your hands on the blocks and you straighten your arms, what does that do to your shoulder blades? By straightening your arms, it's pulling your shoulder blades up, um, elevating your shoulder blades towards your ears. And if we kept the elbows straight and we pushed into the hands, the shoulder blades would move down the back and the pelvis would probably lift a little bit away from the ground. So let's give it a go. Take a breath in, and then as you exhale, push into your hands and see if you can lighten your sit bones away from the ground. And as you do that, can you feel your shoulder blades move down away from your ears? The more you push down with your hands, the further down your back, the shoulder blades might move. Go ahead and set your pelvis down. Let your shoulder blades rise back up. And again, inhale, exhale to push through the hands. <sighs> inhale to let the shoulder blades rise. Sit bones get heavier. Exhale to push. <sighs> One more. So we're gonna slowly drop down, shoulder blades rise, and exhale. <sighs> Great, go ahead and set your tush down. And then let's put the blocks off to the side. 
And I'm gonna scoot forward a little bit so I have plenty of room. We're gonna roll back. So reach your arms forward and imagine that your tailbone is a spade and you're digging up a divot right underneath your pelvis and keep scooping up with your spade as you slowly start to lower down to the ground one vertebra at a time. Imagining that you're holding a grapefruit in between your chin and your chest as you go. And of course, if you need to flop, <laughs> if you just need to flop on back, feel free to flop on back. And then when you get down to the ground, go ahead and get reorganized with your wardrobe and your placement, whatever you need to do. Okay, so you're gonna reach down with your hand, see if you can let your fingertips touch your heels. And then from here, go ahead and tuck through your chin. So as you tuck through your chin, you're gonna feel the, the crown of your head lengthen and reach back behind you. Tuck through your chin, lengthen and reach through the crown of the head, and then push the back of your head straight down into the ground. As you push the back of your head straight down, can you just feel the muscles on the front of your neck relax? Okay, and then relax all of that effort. And then from here, take your arms up so the fingertips point towards the ceiling. Reach your fingertips towards the ceiling. This is gonna take your shoulder joints away from the ground, and it's gonna pull the shoulder blades away from the spine. Okay, so from here, start to engage in between the shoulder blades and draw the shoulder blades closer together. And as you do that, the shoulder joints are gonna come back down towards the ground. And you can kind of get really heavy through um, your upper arm bone, maybe feel a little um, depression from your wrists down through your shoulder joints. Like you're actively pushing your shoulder joints towards the ground. And as you do that, be aware of any tendency to arch through your back. Try to keep your rib cage relaxed down. And then again, keep pushing down through the arms into the ground. Tuck the chin ever so slightly as the crown of the head lengthens and then push through the back of the head. So we're pushing into the ground with the back of the head and the shoulder joints. Enjoy a breath. Great job. Okay, you can lower your arms now, relax the effort of your neck and head. Let's pick the hips up just a bit, swing them over to the left and set them back down. And from here, you're gonna extend your right leg straight and then we're gonna roll the um, left knee over to the ground. So if that feels too far away to roll all the way over, or if your knee doesn't really like settle nicely on the ground, you can always rest it on your bolster or on a block. And I think I can most easily get my block. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay. So from here, I'm going to take my left arm up and around in a windmill. And as my arm comes back behind me, I'm gonna let my chest open up towards the ceiling. And then my arm's gonna continue down by my side, forward, as my arm reaches forward, my shoulders stack a little bit more. And then again, continuing this windmill, feeling hopefully some opening in the front of the left chest there as the arm comes behind the torso. One more round here. And this time, on this last time, as your arm comes back behind you, we're gonna kinda let it hang out back there. So from here, you're just gonna kinda toggle the arm up towards the head and down towards the feet. So you're really moving within the range where you feel the greatest stretch sensation for the front of the chest kind of teasing out that tension there. Oh, it feels good. <laughs> a 
last few moments here. Okay, and let's go ahead and close off. Bring that left arm down by your side. And then we're gonna just roll back onto the back. You can bend both knees and bring your pelvis back into center. Put your mic pack back on. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and just proactively switch the block back over. And then from here, you're gonna pick your hips up and swing your hips over to the right, set your hips down, extend your left leg, and then again, we're gonna roll the right leg over. So we're kind of rolling over onto the right side. Again, if your knee doesn't want to come all the way down to the ground, don't make it, don't force it. Give it the support of a block. Okay, the right arm is gonna be our windmill this time. So it's gonna start by coming in front of the head and then up, back, and behind. And as the arm comes back behind, again, the chest is gonna maybe open a little bit more towards the ceiling. Comes down by the side, forward to close the chest off, reaching up. I feel like I'm just like tracing all of my props <laughs> as I go here enjoying the sensation of just um, kind of the, the lubrication that this movement brings to that shoulder joint. And now this time we're gonna pause with the arm back behind us, kind of in that area where you feel the greatest stretch for the front of the chest. And then you're gonna just move, um, kind of swish up and down within that area of greatest stretch. Enjoy a nice deep breath. And let's close off the windmill by bringing the arm down by the side. And then from here, we can go ahead and roll back onto the back, get your hips back in center. Reach down for your heels. Take a breath in and as you exhale, press into your heels and let your hips lift away from the ground any amount. Inhale, set your hips back down. Exhale, lift your hips. Inhale, lower. Nice and slow. Exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. So if you're feeling the mellow vibes <laughs> and you want to capitalize on the mellow vibes, um, feel free to set a timer for yourself and take some, some nice relaxation or meditation time here. If you're ready to get on with it and get on with the rest of your day, just take one more hip, um, one more hip bridge and lower. And then you can roll over to one side and slowly sit up. Ah, <sighs> thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that your shoulders and your hips and your midsection feel well moved and well oiled and a little bit greasy so that you don't feel like the Tin Man at the beginning of The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> okay, I'll see you next time.